Hey guys, it's Matt, welcome to Speed Shooter, and today we're going to be looking at changing the alpha value of materials or making them be able to be from fully opaque to transparent setting the alpha value. I'm going to show you three ways to change the alpha value of a material. First is going to be the shared material, so any material that sits in your project will be shared across many many assets. So I'm going to show you how to change that project materials alpha specifically, and that would, as I say, change every single object. That you would have. But the second way is we're going to look at an instance material. So it takes that original material, creates a copy of it to be used just in that instance, so then we can make changes on it without affecting the original and affecting any other object which shares the original material. And then I'm going to show you how to use a simple slider to be able to change the alpha value to on either a instanced or a normal shared material. So all I've got in my scene is a cube with a material and your material when you create it right click create and choose material you need to make sure that it has transparency on its rendering mode it's the same in whichever version of unity you use or whichever render pipeline it must be transparent to support transparency and you can see that on our albedo color you can see there's an alpha value and we can set that from zero to one. Now we're going to, and I have a basic slider which goes from one to zero just so I can show you another example of how to do it. So we'll create a script and we'll go right click create C sharp and we're just going to call this alpha change and I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio. So I'm going to get rid of the starting methods here and what we're going to do is the first instance is show you how to change a material. So a material which would be shared across many different objects. Private material with a capital and I'm just going to call this my material. So this is going to be something that we find from the project panel. Then in this case we can say void start and you can do this on your slider but I'll give you the example of doing it in a start method just so that you might want to set material alpha to zero at the beginning. So we're going to create a local reference to the color that we're going to set because albedo is just a color but it has an alpha value attached to it. So that is then equal to the my material dot color which is getting the color from the actual material that we've got. Then what we want to say is the color that we found dot the alpha value is then equal to let's say zero in our case we which want to set it to the alpha value to zero. Then now we can say that my material dot color is equal to our color that we've just found which is the alpha value that we've set. So if we go back into Unity, you can see that if I just apply this to our cube and you can see that it's searching for a material and this is from the project panel, so I'll add my transparent material. And when I press play, you will see that it's gone, the alpha has changed and I can check on my transparent material and you can see now that the alpha is at zero. Okay, so the next example we might want to do, we might want to be able to change the instanced material rather than the material across the entire project. So we can do another square bracket serialize field, say private, and then we can say renderer. So we want to access the renderer of the object which holds all of my materials. So we can say of my model. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to comment out what we previously had. And we're going to do something very, very similar. We'll do color again which is with a capital, we'll do a local reference to that and we'll say that my model dot material dot color and then color dot a is equal to zero again. And then my model dot material dot color equals the color that we've found. So the alpha value again. Now we can go back into Unity, select my cube again. You can see that I don't need a my material anymore. I can add my model. So I'll add my cube this time. So if I add my cube to there, you can see that my model still looks transparent because it's changed the material in the inspector. So you need to make sure that you always set that back. Now we can go back on our cube again. We can press play. And you can see that this time the model did change based on the render that we had and it created a transparent material instance. But you can see our original material is still fully solid and hasn't been affected. So now you might ask me, how do we do this with a slider? So that's really simple actually. We can go public void and we'll just say alpha slider. And then in brackets, we want to just create a flow, which is the, the slider value, which we're going to change. So when we move our slider, it we're just going to pass into a parameter of what that slider currently is. And then we can do it either way, whether we change the material or the model. So I'll just grab the model renderer. I'm just going to add this in here. So instead of affecting the alpha and setting that equal to zero, just at any given time, we're going to set that equal to the slider value that we have. 
and I will get rid of these lines in the start method because we don't need that now. If we go back into Unity again, go into our alpha slider, add alpha change to this, we can see that I'm looking for my model, which would be cube. So add the renderer. We can add a new on value changed event, add alpha change script, go to the alpha change and choose the dynamic float, which will be the alpha slider. Now I can get rid of the script that I had on my cube originally. I'll maximize and play and press play here and see that my material is fully opaque. Now, when I move the slider down, you can see that it moves from zero to the maximum, just like this. So we can control it just by our slider. So now if I show you our slider is 0.52. Now if we go on the cube, you can see that there's an instance material and you can see that also has a value of 0.52. Then I will mention that you can use void on destroy to destroy your actual renderer material because if it's instanced and when you exit the game, sometimes it can clog up the editor and things and it become quite a backlog on the memory. So it's good to destroy any instance materials once you finish with them and on destroy just means when your scene changes on your game ends, it will destroy those materials so they're not left behind. So be sure to let me know down in the comments if you have any suggestions on to make this better or anything that you can share with the community. Do come and join my Patreon to support my channel and it would really help you can get access to scripts projects and everything you see in my tutorials come and join me on discord if you want to chat come and check out my fantastic assets on the unity store thank you very much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe cheers